All right, welcome to today's Extreme Quest. I've got a great show today. We've got Phil Taylor from Microsoft Game Studios on the Flight Simulator 10 team. Phil, welcome, thanks for coming. Glad to be here. Let's talk about this game. It's a 25-year-old game. It's obviously a longevity-driven you know, driven franchise. It's been around as long as the PC's been around. Talk to us a little bit about how the game's evolved, how technology's evolved with it. Well, back in the day, it was, of course, wireframe, very simple displays, nothing like what you see here with the realistic instrument package. Uh, through various iterations, we've increased the fidelity of the world. People might not realize this, but you know, a couple versions ago, it was a flat Earth. Now in Flight Simulator 10, it's a total round Earth, it uses the whole world geometry coordinates from 1984, defined uh, ellipsoid. You can fly circumpolar navigation missions. You never could do that before. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the game and, and today running it on an eight core box like we are today. This is the Skull Trail prototype from Intel. And it's still using quite a bit of the headroom that's in, in the box on all eight cores. Talk to us about where this game goes from here. Well, what we do in Flight Simulator 10 is we simulate the whole world. We draw what we call a round earth using world geographic system 84 coordinates. And we take four terabytes of data, compress it down to 15 gigabytes. And with trying to render the whole world, that's just hard. So we're doing a lot of things. There's the world, there's the sky, there's the water, there's the plane, there's the AI for the road, boat, and plane traffic. Uh, there's just a lot of things going on, and it does tax a system. So what we've done with Service Pack 1 that came out two weeks ago is we enabled both the autogen trees and buildings and the terrain engine, these two key parts, to use multi-core. So you'll see during loading, about a third reduction, and you'll see during flying, pretty continual use. And it really does show a benefit. The game's much smoother, as well as some improved frame rate. So you've got, obviously, advanced terrain mapping, uh, better AI. Uh, the game's obviously running and taxing eight cores now. Where does it go beyond eight cores? How much could you actually use? So just the terrain engine itself, we have what we call a radial grid around the plane, and there's 64 tiles there. So we could clearly use 64 cores just for the terrain engine. We're not even talking about moving AI onto the cores or moving the physics, which could be done in the future. So we think we'll scale up to 256 cores when you get there. Wow. Wow, 256 cores. That'd be great. Talk about a rig, right? An eight-core machine or, for that matter, a 256-core machine and a 1080p projector to play it on a wall like this. Where do I sign up? <laughs> I, I want one of these projectors. This is just awesome. So, Phil, the game looks great on eight cores. I'm actually glad to see it not just running, but running well and using all of those eight cores. When we have 16 or more, we'll actually have you back down and see if it runs again. I'm sure it will. Oh, great. We'll, we'll, we'll take advantage of them. No Very problem. Good. Very good. Thanks for coming down again. And for you, we'll see you next time on The Quest. Make sure that you tune in and see who we've got and what we've got on the big screen.